Hello everyone, today I'm going to take you on a tour of this 2021 Subaru Ascent and show you why it's an excellent family crossover. This car is very practical and is a very good choice if you're looking for a three row crossover. Next up I wanted to look at the infotainment system in the middle here and at the top we can first see the smaller screen. So this one is a has some basic information here so you can see we have the temperature, there is the estimated fuel remaining as well as the time. So that's present in this upper screen. In this lower screen these are where we can find our general actual uh, infotainment settings. So first we have the phone app. So if I tap the phone app It'll ask to add a device. I don't have a device connected right now, so I'll hit no. But we have some basic options. You can have the overview, you can look at messages, there's a phone book, you can dial a number, etc. if you connect a phone. You can go to settings as well. So Super Starlink is um, a super specific application. And settings is just our general settings here. And there's also a cool feature called the driver profile that I wanted to mention. So what this is, if we activate a driver profile, you can customize the theme and the settings for the specific driver. So about a two, there's a default profile, and it should activate the default profile. And then the new profile, so I can activate that, I can delete it, I can edit it, etc. I'm going to activate the profile I created. And then once it's done, we should see the new profile activated. And there we go, the new profile is activated. So that's a cool feature. Here we can select our general settings, here our sound settings, our phone settings, and our vehicle settings oops, as well. So all of these settings are available in the settings page. We can add a shortcut. This allows us to add all the shortcuts that are already present here. So I'm not going to go ahead and add any more ones. But you can also go to apps. And we have some apps here. And this is the cool part. So we can see there are some different apps. I am not sure what this app is. It says it's unavailable, so I think you have to connect a device to access that. And it's the same thing for Pandora, for example. For Pandora, if you want to use Pandora, you could connect a device and you can use Pandora. But really, my favorite part is that it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So there's Android Auto and there's Apple CarPlay. Those are very useful. So you can just use your phone as your infotainment system, pretty much. I wonder what my Subaru is. Ah, so my Subaru is just things like for maintenance, for example, you can make an appointment. You can ask for roadside assistance, etc. I am not going to do that right now. So when you want to go home, by the way, you can hit this button in the corner, or you can press this button in the middle. So if you hit that, that'll also take you to the home page. So there's the My Subaru app. It's on the main page as well. The Media app. This is um for connecting a device and using a disc for media, USB, and Bluetooth. There's also a couple of other options like auxiliary, the auxiliary headphone jack port. So if you connect the device using one of those ways, you can access the media. And lastly is the radio. So you can go ahead and use the radio. And the nice part of this car is that it has a physical volume dial. So that's nice. You don't have to use the infotainment system to adjust the volume. You can just use the physical volume dial like so. And on the right, there's a tune and scroll dial. So below the infotainment system itself, we also have some other buttons. We have like the radio, the phone the apps, etc. So those are some physical buttons that are also available. So below the infotainment system, there are also physical climate control buttons. And I like this because, you know, it's not buried in the infotainment system and you can just access these at any time. So here we have some physical buttons. We have the temperature dials on either side. We have the fan mode, so you can adjust the fan speed. Here's the on off button, so you can turn that on and off. The sync button, so that syncs both sides and the rear. Oh, there we go, turned on. Um, you can see, we can look at the rear climate control, we can lock the rear climate controls if we want to, and you can turn the rear climate controls on and off, like so. And below we have heated seats, the recirculating air button, front defogger, the rear defogger, and the as well as the mirror heaters, and the air conditioning, so you can turn that on or off. So I'm just going to turn the climate controls off, and there we go. So that's the physical climate control buttons. Over here in the middle, there is a center console as well. So we can open it up using this latch. And there are two layers to this console. There's this top layer that you can remove and store smaller items. There's also a coin tray in this top layer. And then the bottom layer here is much deeper storage for storing larger items. So up here, this is the uh, the rooftop lights. You can turn those on, and here's the one on the other side. Oops, there we go. 
And also here, there's the sunglasses holder, so you can open that, and there you can put your sunglasses. And there's also the same mirror feature that I mentioned in the Honda CRV. So if I do that, you can see you can monitor the entire back of the car using this mirror, which is a very nice feature. So the Subaru Ascent is a family three-row crossover, and so it's kind of intended to be a nice practical vehicle. So if you get around the back here, we can open the door. And if we open the door, we can see it has a very nice um, large entry. So let's go ahead and get in the second row. And in the second row, we can see I have a lot of space. This is the back of the front seats, and I have a lot of space between the, my knees and the back of the front seats. So there are also some pockets here where we can stick some items, and they're on both sides. And at the back, there are rear climate controls, so we can turn those on, we can control them, we can increase our temperature in the back, we can change our mode here, and we can also enable automatic climate control if we want to. And here's the fan speed, we can adjust that. And that's the physical climate controls in the back. So below that, we also have USB-A ports. So you can plug in your devices from the back seat of this car as well. Around here in the middle, this is the center console. So it's not the center console, sorry, it's the center armrest. And if I open that, you can see two cup holders, a pretty normal center armrest. Also, around here, these seats do have some controls. So you can actually pull this and pull the seat forward or backwards if you want to give the third row more room or if you want to get some more room in the back. Also back here, there are individual lights for the rear passengers. So here is a light. Right now it's on because one of the doors is open, but you can turn that on and off. And also there is the climate control vents back here as well. You can see those are also present on the other side. Okay, so I wanted to talk about folding down the second row seats and accessing the third row. So to fold down the second row seats, it's a very simple process. There are these two steps. So you just pull the latch. That'll bring it forward like so. Now you pull this latch. That'll bring it down. It's that simple. Accessing the third row is just as simple. There's this latch here. Just pull this latch. And push the seat forward. And that's it. We are ready to get into the third row so now that we're in the third row you can just pull the seat back and we have a good amount of space back here so i have a good amount of space it's a good amount for a third row there are cup holders back here there are air vents and a light and this is also on both sides so the third row is a pretty good place to spend time and also to get out of the third row Here's this latch here again. It's accessible to the third row passengers as well. You just pull that, push the seat forward, and then you're out. This car also has quite a few safety features as well. So here we can look at the, you can go ahead and look at the blind spot monitoring assist. So that's available um, if there's a car in your blind spot, that'll go ahead and turn on. There's also a cluster of buttons here so you can turn on the, the lights we have the trunk opener button as well as the traction control off button and steering was also a very nice looking steering i like the way the steering wheel looks it has a, it's very clean and elegant here there's also the shifter and also a few buttons for example there's x mode which is subaru's special mode so there's x mode it's very nice and there's also a the auxiliary jack is over there as well as the two usb a ports so I wanted to talk about the styling of the Subaru Ascent. We can see that this car has very nice looking style. I actually really like the way they designed this car. It makes it look like it's a smaller car than it actually is. And it looks really, really good. You can see the wheels, the overall design. It just flows well and looks like a smaller crossover kind of vehicle, even though it's a very large practical SUV. Overall, the styling of this car is very, very good. I think Subaru nailed the styling of the new Ascent. So this car's engine is a 2.4 liter four cylinder and this produces 260 horsepower. And it gives good amount of power for a car of this size. This three row crossover definitely gets a good amount of power from this engine. And I also like the way it's all exposed. It looks really cool under here with all the different components. There's no engine cover, which just makes it look awesome. And so that's the 2020 Subaru Ascent. 
This car is an excellent family three-row crossover, and I highly recommend this if you're in the market for a nice, technological, new, modern, safe, and comfortable vehicle. This really is an excellent choice if you're looking for that.